And the next item of business is a statement by Neil Gray on leading Scotland's journey to becoming a start-up nation. The Cabinet Secretary will take uh, questions at the end of his statement. Therefore, there should be no interventions or interruptions. Um, I would invite uh, Cabinet Secretary around 10 minutes, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I, I am convinced that high-growth entrepreneurship can power the transformation of the Scottish economy. The economic impact of new and scaling firms is colossal. They are 40% more productive than the economy as a whole, act as a magnet for external investment and radiate innovation through customers and supply chains, driving job creation and wage growth beyond the walls of their own enterprises. And in Scotland, the true value of our startup community goes beyond what can be measured by hard economic analysis. Our entrepreneurs are people of vision, drive and imagination, and through the problems they solve and the jobs they create, they use these gifts to make better futures for our people and our communities. I think of Blackford analysis, which uses the power of artificial intelligence to improve patient outcomes. I think of Rusa, a Google-backed seafood trading platform that protects our waters by eliminating waste and empowers local fishermen to command the best price for their catch. I think of Intelligent Growth Solutions, a rapidly scaling firm whose approach to precision farming is at the frontier of the push to deliver global food security. These companies and dozens more dispel the myth that growth and well-being are contradictory economic principles. Presiding officer, it is for all of these reasons that this government is today setting a vision to establish Scotland as one of Europe's leading start-up economies. We begin this journey from a position of strength. Despite significant macroeconomic headwinds, our startup ecosystem last year attracted record investment of £953 million, outperforming all UK regions with the exception of the so-called Golden Triangle between London, Oxford and Cambridge. But our pride at this success must be tempered by the reality that over this same period, the Swedish ecosystem attracted capital totalling £5.4 billion. This illustrates the scale of the prize and underscores that the gap between Scotland's entrepreneurial potential and its performance is perhaps our greatest economic opportunity. What we, need, what we needed was a plan to help us realise that potential, and that is why we appointed Mark Logan as Scotland's first chief entrepreneur. We have worked closely with him, producing a series of publications that together form a sophisticated and comprehensive plan to drive the systematic reforms necessary to establish Scotland as a world-class entrepreneurial economy. This new plan proposes actions across the strategic domains of gender equality, uh, uh, infrastructure, education and international presence. I will now proceed to take each of these in turn, describing our achievements today and our priorities in the current financial year. I will begin with the Scottish Government's response to Pathways, Anna Stewart and Mark Logan's groundbreaking review of how we can support more women to start and scale businesses. And I would like to thank Anna and Mark for their work and recent engagement, which has helped to persuade me of the need to drive so hard on this agenda. The Pathways review findings are stark and its recommendations are bold. Only one in five of Scotland's businesses are led by women. Startups founded by women receive only 2% of investment capital. And the lack of meaningful progress is explained by deep-rooted societal barriers that disproportionately impact women. The review correctly describes this as a denial of opportunity on literally an industrial scale. This is intolerable in the well-being economy that I am dedicated to, being, uh, to building. We have a moral and economic duty to meet these challenges head on, and that is why I am proud to announce that we are accepting this report and will immediately work on its implementation. The report's recommendations are broad and powerful, encompassing cultural change, long-term intervention in education and more immediate support to women in business. I will therefore focus my remarks on the actions that we will prioritise in this financial year. First, we are committed to the creation of pre-start centres and pop-ups focused on encouraging women to start businesses and providing best-in-class support to help them develop products, adopt sound commercial strategies and get early access to funding. As part of that work, we will give early consideration to how we can implement the proposal for a concept fund, offering women the seed funding they need to turn good ideas into growing businesses. Second, we will relaunch the Scottish Government's Competitive Ecosystem Fund with an explicit focus on supporting projects and address the review's key themes of entrepreneurial technique, access to finance and education. 
I'm also pleased to announce that we'll maintain our support for the organisations uh, such as Women's Enterprise Scotland, Invest in Women and Business uh, Women Scotland ahead of a shift to competitive funding in future years. Third, we will work with our enterprise agencies, the Scottish National Investment Bank and private sector investors to open up investment avenues for women-led businesses and for other under-invested groups. And finally, we will improve our collection and reporting of data, developing a dashboard of measures to evaluate the extent to which our actions are succeeding. Moving on to entrepreneurial infrastructure, the Scottish Government is well on its way to delivering arguably the finest system in Europe dedicated to the creation and scaling of high growth businesses. The £42 million tech scaler network is a game changer for our startup community, putting the wind of Silicon Valley technique into the sails of Scottish innovation. This is a complex project delivered on time on budget and six of the seven uh, physical sites are fully operational and already host 247 startups with a further 1300 members accessing virtual support and education the length and breadth of Scotland. An end-to-end -end entrepreneurial curriculum has been developed with courses ranging from beginner level through to the advanced techniques necessary to achieve scale. Reforge is Silicon Valley's most prestigious provider of scale-up education and through TechScaler, Scotland is the only country in the world to hold a national licence with 47 entrepreneurs already learning and growing alongside the world's best businesses. A key objective is to ensure that the services offered by pre-start centres and existing ecosystem assets such as NHS testbeds and the Net Zero Technology Centre are seamlessly connected to the TechScaler network creating a powerful continuum of support for entrepreneurs in every industry as they progress through each level of scale. And as part of ensuring that our existing ecosystem continues to flourish, I can confirm that we will once again uh, support uh, Scottish Edge's excellent complementary uh, work to identify and back Scotland's most promising new businesses. And just this Tuesday, in a speech to uh, ecosystem builders in Brussels, the First Minister announced the publication of Ross Tuffy and Joe Little's report on entrepreneurial campuses, the Scottish Government's blueprint to position our universities and colleges as hotbeds of startup creation and scaling. This work is about establishing an alliance with universities and colleges, catalyzing a movement that has already started to build in the sector through an increased focus on spin-out companies and the broader commercialization of research. This movement is responsive to a shifting culture in which learners no longer view institutions merely as a means of acquiring a degree, but as places where they can meet co-founders, experiment with cutting-edge technologies and create the innovation-led businesses necessary to drive Scotland's economic future. The report sets out a range of initiatives to accelerate that mission, and we have provided £5.5 million increase in the 23-24 University Innovation Fund to deliver it. Presiding officer, I now turn to entrepreneurial culture and education. I take my hat off uh, to our wonderful entrepreneurs and to the work that they do. And while there appears to be a perception that entrepreneurs must have somehow be uh, different, the evidence uh, suggests and uh, repeated studies have shown that consistent exposure to quality entrepreneurial education and networks is a powerful means of instilling the necessary mindset, attitudes and skills. In other words, we can train our entrepreneurs. That is why I am pleased to announce that over the coming year, I will work closely with ministerial colleagues, our partners at Young Enterprise Scotland, the Prince's Trust industry, and crucially, our teachers to systematically embed project-based entrepreneurial learning in schools across Scotland, alongside other measures we are working on for our schools. As the flywheel effect of our interventions across infrastructure, education and investment start to yield momentum, we will also have an eye to what that means for Scotland's presence on the global stage. The best entrepreneurial ecosystems are synonymous with the nations that host them, acting as a magnet for talent and inward investment. Our ambition is therefore to establish Scotland as a global hub for startup founders and investors, akin to the reputation previously enjoyed by Sweden, uh, presently enjoyed by Sweden and Finland. Uh, recent uh, events to showcase Scottish business in Helsinki, Silicon Valley and New York revealed strong interest from external investors in the quality of Scottish startups, an impression that we are keen to reinforce. And so uh, we will this year embark on an exciting pilot to establish a, brand, a branch of the TechScaler network 
in the heart of Silicon Valley. This will allow the stars of the Scottish startup scene to live and work for an extended period in the world's leading hub for innovation, exposing founders to expanded networks, world-class technique and enhanced opportunities to raise capital. As well as being hugely enriching an experience for the founders, the idea is that the quality of our companies will stimulate broader investor interest in the Scottish ecosystem. And as that interest takes hold, over time, we will look to build links with other leading ecosystems, such as the Nordics, Canada and Ireland, bringing new ideas, talent and investment to Scotland. So, Presiding Officer, in perhaps the most challenging fiscal environment in living memory, this package of support represents an investment in our startup ecosystem of up to £17.5 million this financial year. It is a package uh, of vision and aspiration that sends a clear and powerful message to Scotland's innovators, entrepreneurs and disruptors. This government believes in you and we are prepared to back you. And I will close by reminding the Chamber that it was a Scottish start-up led by James Watt that ignited the industrial revolution that transformed global living standards and lifted millions of people uh, across the world out of poverty. With the health and demographic, uh, demographic challenges post-pandemic, with the cost of living crisis, with climate change uh, and the economic damage caused by Brexit, the challenges that we face today are no less profound. The world needs Scottish start-ups uh, to get to work and we will help them on their way. Thank you. Thank you. Cabinet Secretary, the Cabinet Secretary will now take questions on the issues raised in his statement. I intend to allow around 20 minutes, after which we'll need to move on to the next item of business. And I'd be grateful for any members wishing to ask a question to press the request to speak buttons. Uh, and I call first Murdo Fraser. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for his statement and for advance sight of it? And can I welcome uh, the focus uh, that he puts upon promoting entrepreneurship and the new initiatives being announced today? These are much needed. Uh, this government has had a troubled relationship with the business community, not helped by the fact that the junior coalition partners are actively hostile to economic growth. Yep. And our track record on business startups is poor. In 2019, the last year before COVID, Scotland had 48 new business registrations per 10,000 of the adult population, compared to a UK average of 72. And excluding London, the UK figure is 62. So even on that basis, we are lagging far uh, behind other parts of the UK. So in welcoming the announcements today, can I ask the Cabinet Secretary uh, the following? Uh, firstly, uh, does he have a target for increasing the business start-up rate for Scotland? If so, what is it and for when will it be delivered? Uh, secondly, in relation to the serious issue he raised of the lack of start-up capital for women entrepreneurs, when does he expect the initiatives he announced today to be delivered? Uh, and thirdly, in relation to entrepreneurial learning in schools, does he intend that this will be mainstreamed across the curriculum and taught to all pupils, or is it the intention is that this be an optional standalone subject? Thank the Cabinet Secretary. I thank uh, Murdo Fraser for the constructive way in which uh, he has responded uh, to the statement and our uh, statement of intent around uh, making Scotland uh, the start-up hub of, of Europe. Um, he uh, thanked me for advance sight some of, of the statements, some of which we discussed uh, last night uh, with uh, Daniel Johnson as well at the RBS dinner, um, that uh, we were uh, discussing some elements of uh, the uh, issues that were, are before us, including uh, access to finance, which I, I recognise is a, a major challenge uh, for uh, some of those who are looking uh, to get access to start-up. That's exactly why we're looking to inv in instil the confidence uh, in the market to ensure that that access access to finance can continue to come. We've, I've mentioned in my statement uh, the fact that uh, we've already seen a record investment in, in Scottish startups uh, coming uh, over the last year. We want to build on that. That's not enough. Uh, and we heard last night uh, evidence of, of where there are challenges. I'll keep working um, with financial colleagues um, and with uh, the business community to, to see what more we can do to ensure that that access to finance can continue to flow. I don't have a particular target. I'm happy uh, to, to talk to Murdo Fraser about uh, where we might uh, see this ending up. But I think we have seen, not least in what uh, Murdo Fraser highlighted in his contribution, where we have room for growth. Uh, and we certainly have room for growth. Uh, and in terms of um, the work being done in schools, I'll be working with uh, my uh, colleague Jenny Gilruth uh, and education colleagues around uh, how, far, how much further we can go in terms of ensuring that there is access to this type of education uh, within our school environment. 
Daniel Johnson to be followed by Evan McKee. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And can I too thank the Cabinet Secretary for advance sight? Uh, and, and can I welcome this focus? Because undoubtedly I agree with him that startups are a, a you know, potential to drive new jobs uh, and uh, growth for the Scottish economy. Uh, and I also welcome uh, the reintroduction of the Scottish Edge funding. I know that that interruption actually led to a reduction in the number of awards they were able to make this year, so that is welcome. But can I engage in something of critical consensus? Because I agree while there are strengths, there are issues in terms of Scottish startups, and indeed in terms of the, the total number of startups, the only English region Scotland beat was the North East. We lack uh, high growth firms. We have 1.5 uh, high growth firms for 10,000 people compared to three. And indeed my stat from last night that is ringing in my ears is that 40% of Scottish businesses have never accessed any formal finance at all. So can I ask the questions? Following on from the point about targets, the Cabinet Secretary said there would be a scorecard. When will we have that scorecard and what metrics uh, will it contain? Indeed, will it have a broad spectrum rather than just high-tech, high-growth startups? On the point around uh, growth in small and micro-businesses, we know many businesses start but then stall. So what initiatives will there be to help uh, investment and growth amongst the, the broad mass, broad base of small and micro businesses? Cabinet, se Cabinet Secretary, I, I've given can you... Can we make sure that there's no uh, over-focus on Mr Johnson, sectors. can you resume your seat? Cabinet Secretary. I'm, I'm, happy to, I'm happy to have a further discussion uh, with Daniel Johnson to uh, answer uh, some of these points uh, in, in more detail and to uh, get to some of the questions that he was perhaps uh, looking to get to. But in, in his... Uh, questions. He diagnoses exactly why we need to take this intervention. You know, he, he's absolutely right in terms of uh, the statistics that, uh, that he and I uh, saw last night from RBS in terms of um, the work that is still needing to be done in terms of access to finance, in terms of uh, encouraging uh, greater numbers of, of startups. So I'm happy to engage with Mr Johnson uh, over the summer months on uh, answering some of the questions that he poses. Ivan McKee to be followed by Liz Smith. I uh, thank the Cabinet Secretary for the statement and uh, hugely encouraged by the amount of work that's going into taking forward this entrepreneurial agenda. It's worth noting that Scotland's business start-up rate for young people is actually amongst the highest in the UK thanks to the good work of Young Enterprise Scotland, Princess Trust, Converse Challenge and others. So can I ask what the Scottish Government are doing to build on this good work, making starting a business be seen as a genuinely aspirational career choice and positive destination for young people, including information and support for young people thinking of becoming entrepreneurs? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, first of all, can I pay tribute to uh, Ivan McKee and uh, Kate Forbes uh, for uh, starting this work that I am now able to uh, build upon to ensure that we have the foundations of the support network to ensure that we not only uh, have the infrastructure that allows for uh, people to be able to start their own business, but there is an encouragement uh, from an early age to be able to do that. And he's absolutely right uh, in terms of uh, the work being done with the likes of uh, uh, Young Enterprise Scotland. I remember I was involved in Young Enterprise when I was uh, at school uh, myself, a wonderful initiative that is done alongside the uh, uh, Prince's Trust uh, as well. Uh, in addition to that, ensuring uh, that uh, young people are exposed as early as possible to uh, that type of mindset. But also, that I point uh, Ivan McKee to the announcement made this week by the First Minister around entrepreneurial campuses. I think that is going to make a transformational change. Liz Smith to be followed by Rona McCarthy. Uh, can I also welcome uh, what the Cabinet Secretary has said, but can I ask him if he also agrees that this is only going to be deliverable if there is a broader perspective on economic policy which enhances productivity, economic growth, and which reduces the tax burden for businesses? Cabinet Secretary. So I, I, Liz Smith and I had a, a very interesting discussion uh, this morning around uh, some of these uh, uh, issues. Uh, I'm looking to foster a wellbeing economy in Scotland where uh, we recognise that there cannot be a, a good, strong economy without a good society. There cannot be a good society without a strong economy. And the, the two need to work uh, together. We're looking alongside the work that's been published this morning on uh, realigning and uh, uh, our, our relationship with business um, uh, and also making sure um, that we deliver upon some of the points that have been raised uh, there. We need to make sure that we have economic growth, but that economic growth is for a purpose, and that purpose is about making sure that we deliver on the well-being of our people as well as our businesses across Scotland. Rona Mackay to be followed by Pauline McNeill. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for such a positive statement? I'm particularly delighted to hear of the um, Start-up Initiatives for Women. 
Um, however, startups will be facing additional financial pressures given the current challenges our economy faces. So, can the Cabinet Secretary provide any information as to the steps uh, which the Scottish Government can take to mitigate um, these pressures? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, yeah, I thank Rona Mackay uh, for that. Obviously, we're acutely aware uh, of the challenges operate, the, the operating environment that uh, businesses continue to face in the wake of Brexit, recovering from COVID, uh, the current conflict, uh, the, Russia's illegal invasion of uh, uh, Ukraine, uh, and the resulting uh, cost impacts. The Scottish Government is uh, well connected into the startup ecosystem and it is in constant dialogue to understand the pressures that startups uh, are facing, uh, as well as the opportunities that we must capitalise on at pace. We appreciate that startups. Uh, are operating in a complex economic environment, but that's why our £42 million national network of tech scalers is committed to providing founders and leaders uh, in terms of the necessary skills on funding models, uh, models uh, investor attraction and pitching. Uh, alongside other in initiatives, including enterprise agency support, we are committed to fostering an environment in which uh, uh, access to funding is seamless despite economic pressures. Pauline McNeill to be followed by Audrey Nicholl. Presiding officer, can I apologise to the Chamber? I can't wait to the very end of the statement today. The universities are at the forefront of innovation, medical sciences and renewables, but despite that success, people working within the city of Glasgow have expressed to me concerns that their expertise has not been converted into jobs growth on the scale that it should. So can I ask the Cabinet Secretary, what plans are there for the Scottish Government to capitalise on the skills and innovation being developed in Glasgow universities? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, absolutely. This uh, speaks to what I uh, just referred to in answer to uh, Ivan McKee around uh, entrepreneurial campuses, making sure that we have uh, uh, continue to enjoy the benefits of university spin-offs, but also uh, the recently published uh, innovation strategy around ensuring that we have a really strong uh, economic uh, performance in terms of uh, the uh, incredible uh, work that has been done by our researchers uh, and uh, academics uh, at universities, including those in Glasgow. Audrey Nicholl to be followed by Willie Rennie. Thank you. Uh, like other colleagues, I greatly welcome this statement and its relevance to the energy sector. The North East-based Net Zero Technology Centre's TechX programme has to date, supported almost 60 startups, successfully accelerated, eight technologies commercialised, over 200 employees hired, and at least £88 million in startup equity funding raised. So, given the significant success of the TechX Accelerator programme, will the Cabinet Secretary support having an enhanced clean energy technology acceleration programme, such as TechX Accelerator, as part of an energy transition cluster in Scotland? Cabinet Secretary. I am certainly happy to uh, meet uh, Audrey Nicholl to uh, discuss that potential because I recognise the enormous economic and entrepreneurial potential of Scotland's uh, expertise in net zero technologies paired with the abundance of our natural resources. So supporting the growth of this sector is a priority uh, for this government and uh, businesses seeking to start up, grow and scale in this field will be supported uh, through our entrepreneurial uh, ecosystem and I look forward to hearing more about Audrey Nicholl's proposals. Willie Rennie to be followed by Stephanie Callan. This is a, an eminently sensible proposal, but the Minister will understand for years that this has been as much about a cultural change as it is about a system change. But I do welcome the proposals, particularly for women, and making sure we tap into that potential. Universities are going to be important to make this a success. So is he sure we've got the right balance of freeing up intellectual property? And secondly, how is he going to reverse the decline in the performance of Scottish university research compared with the rest of the UK? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, so, uh, I think, first of all, Willie Rennie is absolutely right in terms of the cultural change. That's what I've set out in, in my statement in terms of uh, ensuring that we work with the financial centres uh, and others, uh, our, our agencies, to ensure that there is uh, that mindset shift and a cultural change to support a greater diversity in our, in our start-up. Uh, uh, ecosystem. Uh, in terms of universities, I have set out in response to Polly McNeill and indeed to uh, Ivan McKee around uh, pointing him towards uh, the entrepreneurial campus model, uh, but I am more than happy to have a discussion with him further on, on the areas that he raises. Stephanie Callaghan to be followed by Maggie Chapman. Presiding officer, social enterprises are key to creating the inclusive, empowered communities and the fair and more equal society we often speak of. And the 2021 social enterprise census recorded a 2.63 billion contribution to the Scottish economy. So does the Minister agree that social enterprises will be key to that innovation that lies at the core of solving many of Scotland's societal changes that he touched on in his statement earlier? And what role does he see 
the social enterprise model playing in supporting Scotland's journey to become a start-up nation? Cabinet said. Uh, yes, the, the, the Scottish Government's long-term uh, vision of uh, social enterprise is to be at the forefront of ethical and socially responsible business uh, in Scotland, far-reaching uh, and becoming uh, central to the way that Scotland uh, chooses uh, to do business. Social enterprises in Scotland uh, are supported through a world-class uh, system of support. This includes a pipeline of social uh, investment into the sector from pre-startup uh, through to loans for growth-ready uh, business as well as uh, innovative funding for those in between. Uh, last year, through Scottish Government investment, uh, we funded the start-up of nearly 100 uh, social enterprises and in addition to this a range of business support for the social enterprise sector continues to be provided. Maggie Chapman to be followed by Jamie Hawker Johnson. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and I thank the Cabinet Secretary for advance sight of his statement. He will be familiar with the need for successful startups to consider both scaling up and scaling deep as we've heard from Professor Logan. And following on from the previous question, he will also be aware of the value and social good that cooperatives provide, building community cohesion and resilience, placemaking, creating and sustaining social capital, community wealth, and more. They do, by their nature, like social enterprises, scale deep. Can I ask the Cabinet Secretary how this business model, specifically cooperatives, will be supported by this positive vision for the benefit of local people and community economies across Scotland? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, yes, I, I thank Maggie uh, Chapman for uh, that question. She's absolutely right in terms of the scaling up and scaling deep that uh, alternative uh, business models such as cooperatives, and I declare an interest as a member of my, a cooperative myself, uh, can uh, deliver. We'll continue to uh, provide support to cooperatives uh, in Scotland, and I'll write to Maggie Chapman to provide more detail on the support that's been provided. Jimmy Hawker Johnson to be followed by Stuart McMillan. Thank you. My colleagues Murdo Fraser and Liz Smith have already highlighted that the number of start-ups in Scotland lags behind those in England, which concerns that Scotland's tax policy is one area which impacts on this. I'm sure nearly all in this chamber will agree that it's vitally important uh, that we foster a pro-business environment in Scotland to ensure start-ups have the best possibility of success. So can I ask the Cabinet Secretary how the Scottish Government will ensure that entrepreneurial interests are being considered right across all relevant policy areas. Cabinet Secretary. I, I, I thank uh, Jimmy Halcrow Johnson for his question. I, I would challenge uh, slightly uh, his assertion around uh, our tax policy putting off uh, investment uh, in Scotland because, of course, uh, Scotland is outperforming the rest of the UK in terms of inward investment. So um, uh, that doesn't quite uh, match up. Uh, but, but, I, I, but I accept, but obviously I accept that we want to ensure that um, having uh, the best place to do business in Scotland was part of the, the theme uh, of the New Deal for Business Group and ensuring that we continue to st talk about uh, the package of support that is on offer, uh, some of which I was talking to Liz Smith uh, about this morning, is my job to sell Scotland as being a good place to do business. I will continue to do so and ensure that, as he suggests, I continue to listen to entrepreneurs in the work that they're doing, not least our chief entrepreneur, Mark Logan, behind which uh, we base our plans. Stuart McMillan to be followed by Brian Whittle. Thank you, President Officer. That there's no doubting that entrepreneurship can better be driven by tapping into the most diverse talent group possible. So can the Cabinet Secretary advise what steps the Scottish Government has taken to break down social and economic barriers to entrepreneurship and to support diversity in start-ups and business? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, yes, absolutely. As the, the, the Pathways uh, report sets out, unlocking Scotland's full entrepreneurial uh, potential offers a significant, a huge opportunity um, uh, economically as we fully develop the delivery plans to implement pathways uh, recommendations will widen access to entrepreneurial uh, support and education across all underrepresented groups uh, and uh, delivering accessible support where it is needed, when it is needed. There is no doubt, I've said this uh, previously in the Chamber before, that unlocking the economic potential uh, of women, uh, ensuring that we close the gender pay gap and close uh, the employment gap, ensure that we close the gap uh, on female startups has one of the greatest economic potentials we can invest in. I'm Brian Whittle. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Uh, Scotland has always been an innovative environmental, uh, sorry, an, an entrepreneurial country, including in startups. It's the gap actually, I think, lies in what happens next in that early growth. And, and previously, the SEIS and EIS schemes have been a vehicle in which public sector and private sector have been able to work together to invest in early stage companies, giving them that step up. So can I ask the Scottish Government what it will do to encourage private investment in early stage business growth, including tax efficient use of funding from investment houses and high net worth investors? 
Uh, yes, uh, uh, this is part of the challenge that we uh, heard last night in terms of where uh, the private investment comes from. A lot of that does come internationally rather than domestically. Uh, but I would also point to the support that we are looking to provide uh, our, uh, tech, our, uh, our entrepreneurs and our startups uh, with the investment in the tech scalar network and ensuring that that is uh, married and matched to the likes of the NHS test beds to give better uh, certainty to the projects that they're working on uh, from an investment perspective. I'm more than happy to provide more detail of that to Brian Whittle uh, so that gives him confidence as to the work that we're doing. Thank you very much, Cabinet Secretary. That concludes uh, this item of business. The next item of business is consideration of motion 9765 in the name of Marie Todd on the Online Safety Bill UK legislation. And I call Jenny Mental to move the motion. Thank you. The question on this motion will be put at decision time. The next item of business is consideration of two parliamentary bureau motions. And I ask George Adam, on behalf of the parliamentary bureau, to move motions 9821 on committee membership and 9822 on substitution and committees. Minister. Both moved, presiding officer. Thank you. The question on these motions will be put at decision time. There are two questions um, to be put as a result of today's business. The first question is that motion 9765 in the name of Marie Todd on online safety bill UK legislation be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. That is agreed. The, I propose to ask a single question on two parliamentary bureau motions. Does any member object? Thank you. The final question is that motions 9821 on committee membership, 9822 on substitution on committees in the name of George Adam on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. That is agreed and that concludes decision time. We'll now move on to members' business. We'll have a brief pause actually to allow members to leave the chamber, but please do so as quickly and as quietly as possible.